Okay, guys, what I've got for you today, I can't overstate how huge this is. Huge. I've been waiting for this ever since the moment I started to automate my print-on-demand with AI. What was I waiting for? Perfect text in AI-generated images. Introducing Ideogram. When you go to their webpage, you're going to be hit with recently generated images and just look at some of these beautiful things. This is exactly what we were waiting for in print-on-demand, guys. Like, this changes the game. <laughs> I am so excited. When you first set up your account for Ideogram, it's important to be aware there are two different layers of paying for an account, and you really only need the API if you're doing the print-on-demand workflows. To set up the API, once you've created your account and you're signed in, click over here on the little menu pop down and you will click on API beta. This will take you to your API dashboard and down under billing, you have the option to manage payment and set up a payment. It will top up 40 bucks and then you're ready to roll with the API. Shout out to my friend, Brandon Duff, B Money. He's got a channel on YouTube, definitely subscribe. He's got great stuff. He's the one that clued me into this platform. He sent me a couple of ridiculous thumbnails earlier this week, and I was just blown away when I found out they came totally from AI. I have integrated this service into my print-on-demand workflows. If you're a subscriber to Wonder AI or Make, you can use this. Let's dig into the workflow. You'll need to go ahead and sign in to your make.com or your Wonder AI account. For those who are just joining me in this series and maybe do not have accounts, I have a link down in the description. Thank you for using it. it helps me keep making these videos. To accomplish this workflow, I'm using three HTTP modules. The first is calling out to Ideogram to get the cool text graphics, and the other two are calling out to a service that I've introduced before, Deep AI. These are cutting out the background and scaling the image to be appropriate for the size of a t-shirt. Our first module is an OpenAI chat completion, and I highly recommend using one of the four models. I tried to use GPT 3.5 just to be cheap. I like to do that. It was not playing ball this time. So let me read my prompt and I'll explain what was happening. Role is set to assistant, and my prompt, come up with a dad-themed slogan that would sell well on eBay. Leave the slogan without any punctuation marks other than commas. Only one slogan, not multiple. Do not include quotation marks. You are not quoting anything. Do not use quote anywhere. Do not reference eBay. So, as you can probably tell from that negative prompting, one of my bigger issues was I kept getting quotes, and that was a 3.5 thing. No matter what, it just kept feeding me slogans with quotes around it. And that is a problem because in our HTTP module where we're going to be calling out to Ideogram, that is a JSON format, and that's just going to cause nothing but a big fat error. So 4.0 is... I'm using 4.0 Mini. I, uh, I don't truly know the difference. I know I think it's a little cheaper to use the Mini, but it's working just fine for this task. Scroll down, we have Max Tokens 45. I was originally set to 120 and I was getting like paragraphs on shirts and I definitely don't want that. So I backed off to 45 and that controls the size of the slogan. Scroll down and we have temperature, top and number all set to one, which of course you can only see if you're showing your advanced settings. Those are the defaults. Then click on the next module. This one, we are creating our product description. So because the end result here is going to be a t-shirt, I wanted to come up with a cool description to put on the store. And this one is kind of cool. I'm in my Wonder workflows. If you can see, I'm using the Wonder engine, which is a white labeled version of Make. And they have a really cool way of doing this. And I just didn't think to do this before. I don't know if it handles it any better. Uh, if you just type this all in one prompt or break it apart, but they've broken it into separate messages. So the first one is role assistant. You are a world-class copywriter for e-commerce companies. You specialize in creating product descriptions. Then below that, I have another role defined. So you'd create another message. And this one is user. This is the user prompt. Create a product description for a t-shirt with, and then I map to the output from my first module where I'm returning the slogan. To do that, put your cursor down, find the module, drill under choices, drill under message, there it is, content, slap it down, 
And then the rest of this is design in 400 characters or less. Use the word and instead of any ampersand signs. Add 10 relevant hashtags. Scroll down, we have 200 tokens, and that will limit the size of the description to around 200 characters. Click OK. Now we'll move into the module where the magic happens. This is the HTTP module that I'm using to call the Ideogram API. And if you're starting from scratch, instead of from the template that I've provided in the description, add a module, and you're going to want to look for HTTP. You need to scroll down and select Make a Request. Not any of the others. Even though we're using the API and all of that, it's just a basic Make a Request, which is true for almost all the scenarios that I'm using. At the top, for our URL, we have api.ideogram.ai slash generate. Method is post. Scroll down. Under headers, we have item name API dash key. And both are spelled with caps. For value, this is where you are going to paste your API key. So you'll want to go to your ideogram API dashboard, and then you will want to create an API key, copy paste it, paste it into the value field, scroll down, you need to create another item with name set to accept, all lowercase, and application slash JSON. And both of those you will manually type yourself. Scroll down, we have a drop down under body type, select raw, content type, JSON, application slash JSON. Then scroll down, and this is where we have our prompt body, request content field. And as you can see, this is functioning within a syntax that includes quotes. And this is the reason why we can't return quotes in any of our OpenAI modules, because it will just straight cause a big fat error here. And you also have to be careful to avoid that in your prompt right here. Like if you are going to put something in your prompt, you have to be careful not to use any of the characters that are part of this syntax, or you could cause an error. So you don't want to use colons, you don't want to use quotation marks, things like that. All of these values, where did I get those? If we go to our API documentation, you'll want to scroll down and it's the second option, generates images synchronously based on a given prompt. That's the, that's the API that we're using right here. And I got all of these values over here. Show eight properties, and this gives you all the info you need you're setting the aspect ratio, you can control the size and dimension, which modeler is being used, and then you have magic prompt option, and I highly recommend using that. So far, I'm getting better results, uh, just more clean results overall, when I keep that selected to on or auto. Let's review my prompt. Come up with a flat 2D text graphic based on the following text, and then I map to the slogan generated by the first module. Drill down under choices, message, and content, and there is the slogan. Map to that. The text should be any bright color on a stark background, and then I give the hex value for the background that I want, in this case black because I'm making black shirts, ornate style font with thick border and enough space between the characters for digital background removal to be easy. So if I'm removing the background, why am I defining a background right here? Very simple. No background remover is perfect, and the more ornate your text is, the more likely you're going to have tiny little bits that are not very visible as long as you're controlling the background color, but they can be pretty ugly if they're in the wrong color. So if I'm making a black shirt, I define a black value because when it removes the background, all the little spots that it leaves will be little black spots. And so it's not going to really show right here. It's not going to be an issue. Then we have, say you want to make white shirts. You would change this to say any dark color on a stark background, and then you would define the hex value for white. If you didn't do that, any of those little spots that the background remover missed would be pretty ugly and they would show up, you know, pretty bad. So this fixes that issue. And lastly, where we have parse response, we can select yes. And this is where I'm going to have to pause for a second. Thank you very much to Vince's1921. I posted this video yesterday. This is a remake of the video. I was using a text parser because I was selecting no, and it was returning all, everything in one body of text. 
When I first started running this process, it really seemed like selecting no was the only way I wasn't going to keep erroring out, but that must have been an unrelated issue. When we select yes, we're getting the URL output that we need so we can map as normal to the URL output without having to deal with a text parser. Thank you very much, Vince's1921. The next HTTP modules will be the same make a request module, and these will be calling to the DeepAI website. If you haven't seen that video, I've included a link in the description where I show you how to set up your account with DeepAI and set up this module. We'll walk through the module again today since it's really simple. So for URL, I've got api.deepai.org slash api slash torch dash srgan. Method is post. Under headers, you're going to create a value for name, api dash key, all lowercase, and then again, under value, this is where you will paste your API key from DeepAI. Scroll down, body type, application, x, www, form, URL encoded. Under field, you will create an entry. Under key, you will put image, all lowercase. And then we can now map to the URL returned from the ideogram HTTP module. To do that, put your cursor down. Drill down under data, and there we go, we got our nice URL. Scroll down, parse response equals yes, OK. Next, we have a call out to DeepAI to remove the background. And this is api.deepai.org slash api slash background dash remover. Now, why did I do it in this order? Originally, I was punching out the background and then scaling it up. And what was happening is I was scaling up the little parts that it would miss. You will get better results if you scale it up first and then you remove the background. Heads up. So here we're removing the background post. Same as before, API-key and you got to provide your API key. Application. Everything else is basically the same, only you're going to map to the output of DeepAI. So each module is mapping to the output of the previous module to accomplish this. Just a really simple domino chain. Parse response, yes, OK. And now we have our Printify modules. For Printify, first you're going to want to upload an image. If you do not already have an account with Printify, thank you for using my link down below. In Printify, you will have to set up your account and create a store before this works. So if you're just now joining us for this series, you'll have to walk through all of that. And I've got that in my first print on demand video if you need assistance there. Under File, we're going to choose File Name. For my file name, I'm using the slogan that is returned by my first module. It's totally up to you. You can define a name manually, or if you wanted, you could create another chat GPT module just to define a title. Then we've got upload image by, and I've selected URL, and I'm mapping to the output of the previous module. Easy peasy. And last, we have our create a product module. You have to connect to the store that you've created. I created a new eBay store for this adventure, Bad Dad Jokes Incorporated. And for my title, I'm mapping again to the slogan, and I'm saying dash t-shirt. That's going to make it so that when it's in my store, all of my products have the slogan name, dash t-shirt, as the actual product title. Then the description, I'm mapping to the description, which was my second chat completion module. Choices, drill down under message, and content, and that will populate the product description. Blueprint ID. So be very careful if you change either of these values. You can, and if you, if you select right here, you got to wait a couple seconds, wait for it to populate your options. You can basically change it to any product that they have on the Printify website. But caveat, sometimes it doesn't always play nice. If you change these and the print provider doesn't offer the same options for this blueprint that another does, you will end up with a blueprint mismatch error, and you'll probably have to spend days figuring out what's going on there. What's ultimately happening is that each print provider doesn't have the same option. So for, let me scroll down, just for instance, one print provider might offer Excel and 2XL while another doesn't, and if you leave your 2XL defined, and they don't have that with that print provider, it will error out. Or down here, where we have our print areas, and we're providing 
placeholder and position front. This is what defines where the image is going to go on the clothing. And some items, some blueprint providers, they will want front and back, even if you're not passing something for the back. Whereas this one right here that I have set up, Swift POD, they're fine just accepting the front. How do you figure all this stuff out? This is actually why I love Wonder AI, because Wonder AI has all of this worked out. So when you go into your blueprints under Wonder AI, just drill under Wonder Workflows, Premium Workflows, and when you copy these or launch, then these are all plotted out and ready to go, and you don't have to worry about compatibility. They've already kind of done all the troubleshooting and made sure that each item is ready to go and will actually function. So under variants, this is where I changed to black. Originally, these were set for white. And to do that, I click on this. You've got to wait a second while it populates your options. And then you've got all your color options. I just typed in black and then I selected black. And then I went on down for each variable and I included black medium, black large, black XL, and then my placeholder all set to black. You'll notice where price is 2100. You have to do that. It's not including the decimal, but the decimal is created at the Printify level. So if you include the period here, it won't work. It won't be the right price. It's got to be 2100 and that gives me a price of $21. Heads up. So this is the create a product module. This is what is going to upload my item in a draft state to Printify. Let's go through these settings placeholders and what you do is you define whatever sizes that you want. So if you want to go up to 2XL you will need to define up to 2XL. Position front and then I'm mapping to the image returned from Printify X.5, Y.4, Scale 1.1. These are all examples of why Wonder AI kind of rocks because figuring this stuff out on your own is trial and error and you ultimately have to run a lot of processes until you nail the right coordinates. That's why I use Wonder. <laughs> Those guys have hashed out pretty much all of that for all of these different print-on-demand items. Okay, yeah, shameless salesman here, but there you go. It's it's. I'm all about convenience, baby, you know? Click OK. And now this process is ready to run. So let's, let's take it for a test drive and see what happens. The process has completed. Let's take a look at my Printify store. There we go. And check this out. Notice how my shirt is white and it's not black. When I open it up, all my mock-ups are white, but I've got an option to choose this black. Not sure why this is happening. I think we're bumping up against some kind of glitch. So just so you know, no matter what shirt color you're going to choose, you're going to have to go in here and actually manually select this for your mock-ups to be correct. And then we can publish it out to our store. Dads who grill together build memories forever. Not bad, not bad. Meh. You know, I, I <laughs> hard to tell what exactly is going to sell until you just put it out there and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and publish that. Let's check out some of my others. Oop, there's another one I need to change. Let's see what this one says. Dad jokes, barbecue smoke, unforgettable moments, gear up with the best. And you know that, I'm not so sure that I like that. It looks like the background punch out might have grabbed too much. I'm not sure if that is unique and rustic looking or trash and I need to get rid of it. I guess the uh, only way to know is to publish it and see what happens. So some of these designs I might not use. I might need to tweak my prompts a bit. Scroll on down, see some of the other things that I've made. This one's one of my favorites. <laughs> Coolness. I'm going to spend about the next week probably cranking out t-shirts and building this store up. And uh, we'll see where it goes. That's it. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. I hope this supercharges your print-on-demand adventures as much as it does mine. If you've enjoyed my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Onward and upward. Uh -huh.